Nation Council, the President, and the Speaker, and all the staff. You know, uh, what we're talking about this morning is a very historical landmark case that happened back in the 50s. You know, as far as I remember, somewhere around 1953, I was in school in Salem, Oregon. This case, William versus Lee, was publicized all over the United States in newspapers. That time, this case came up in the newspaper. That's how I know. So my name is Jefferson Lee. So I have no part of this case, but <laughs> anyway. So I'm in a son-in-law again, you know. Sometimes people kind of get confused about that. What did you do that William take you to the Supreme Court sometimes people say? <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to briefly say this, you know, back then. My mother-in-law, my father-in-law went through a lot of uh, hardship. They didn't have all the resources. They didn't have all the money that they could take this case to all over in the state of Arizona. They lost the case in the state Supreme Court. Finally, you know, somewhere along the way, the Navajo Nation found out this case was very important. So, one of our leaders by the name of Howard Gorman knows the family. He's the one, his advice told the Navajo, the, 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 the Williams family, they, this case should go on. So that's how the Navajo Nation took over. The Navajo Nation filed a court of appeal for down in San Francisco. So they won that. That's how this uh, case went to, before the Supreme Court, my people. This is what I know. So during that time, 19, 53, 54, this family was going through hardship. They done, they pray, they did their traditional ceremony in every way, trying some way to get some kind of result. But yet, they lost all their case in the state of Arizona. But still, they never gave up. So continuously, they went before the Native American church because my brother, his name was Ralph Lee. He was the Native American church leader in the state of in, in Steamboat. So he is the one that kind of advised the William family. So they called a person by the name of Montana Ani from Pinion, Arizona. He came down to conduct the prayer service in the year of 1955. During the course of the meeting after midnight, of course, you know, at that time, the Native American church priority was illegal. It was prohibited. So during that night, the Navajo Police <coughs> Department came over and arrested everybody in the, in the prayer service. So this is what happened. So they end up in, in jail. They were already suffering. They were already, you know, taking the, you know, the hardship. And yet, you know, they, were, they end up in a, in a tribal jail again. They suffer again. All this consequence, you know, all this hardship. That's what happened back there. But finally, you know, in 1959, you all know, you know, there's a, a little, it used to be a little restaurant over here in what we call a Navajo Nation Tribal Lodge. Me and my wife, you know, we live, we used to live in there in that little apartment. Early in the morning, a lady came by, I guess she was a waitress. 
And she knocked on the door and asked for Mr. Paul Williams Sr. And we told her, say, yeah, she is here. So uh, that, that morning, he said, there's a news that, a message that was uh, brought over. The Navajo Nation General Council, by the name of Norman Latell, he called from Washington, D.C. He sent a message, said yesterday, the Supreme Court decision was fine. We heard that news. Come on over after 8 o'clock, that's what he was told. So we came here at the legal office. The attorney told us, he said, you want your case? I went with my father-in-law. We're sitting there, he told us the news. He told us that he won the case. How do you feel about it? He was asked. He said, I have nothing to say. He just put his head down and cried. I feel that this morning too, I cried with him. It's not the way I got this emotional feeling. That's why I, it was very emotional. He asked, he said, if there's going to be any kind of compensation that I would be rewarded? He said, no. This was a tribal case, he said. So after this day, my people, my relatives, my counsel, my leader, our mother, 102 years old, she's still looking for an answer. She's still looking for forgiveness. But the state government, the state of Arizona, for my own tribal government, now the whole nation, for putting them in jail, for trying to pray, trying to ask God some way, find some comfort, they end up in jail that time. After this day, <coughs> she was looking for that some kind of a appreciation or forgiveness and saying I'm sorry or some kind of reward, money, whatever. She said, I want I want some something that would satisfy my mind before I leave this world. That's what she said. I never can see my mom. As soon as my mom put me on this earth, she left this world. From this day, I don't have a mom. So she's the only one that I call mom. They pay you in Sneko, Mama Vendla. I was educated in Neko, here, I call this in Neko, okay? This case is all over. It's in the law book, everywhere. I hear what is in Badawin Ini. I did try to use it. Joint IBG, the world is a consecration. Now, so now I'm president. Now, one nation president, I don't know the corner. The speaker, the council, the man, the nipaji, the bash, the other, the part of us, oh, baby, the other, the other, the other, the you cannot know for you, I don't know what you're talking about. Thank you very much. I couldn't.